A combo box looks just like a text box field, but it has a little arrow in it that when you click on it, it drops it down. And if I did a combo box for the part number, it would list all the part numbers. But the problem I run into is that if I have a client that calls up and says, okay, I would like to go ahead and purchase the uh, book title, How to Mow Your Lawn, unless I have the part numbers memorized with their associated book titles, I'm going to run into issues. So what I could do is I can go ahead and uh, edit the combo box so that when I click on it, it displays not only the part number, but its corresponding uh, book title. Now before I go ahead and replace this part number text box with the combo box, there's a couple of things I need to be aware of. First of all, what is this form based upon? Is it a query or a table? Because if it's based upon a query, when it comes to creating a combo box, I may get duplicates, and I don't want to base my combo box upon a query. So let me go ahead and right-click in a blank view, go down to Design View, and I want to pull up the uh, property sheet for the entire form. And there's a couple ways I can do it. I can either come up here and click on the property sheet. Of course, it pulls it up. And then once it pulls it up, if I have something else selected and not the form, how do I know if the property sheet is for the form? We'll come up here, and you can see that the selection type is text box. To make it for the form, I could come over here and click on that little uh, uh, light blue square, and then it says form. Or I can click on the drop-down arrow and select form. That brings it up as well. Or close out, probably the fastest way is just to double-click in a blank area off the grid, and it will bring up the property sheet for the entire form. Because here, on the All tab, the record source, or the table or query that this form is based upon, it says it right here. It's a sales and profit query. So I come over here, open up the sales and profit query, and you can see I've got the part number listed here. Now I don't want to base the combo box upon this part number here in the query, because I could get duplicates here, meaning that, you know, I've got a lot of books that are being sold, and hopefully I got a bunch of orders for the same book. In other words, that book is popular. So if I create the combo box based upon this part number field in the query, then I'm going to have duplicates within that combo box, and that's annoying. I don't want to see that. How do I resolve this? Well, I want to find out what tables this query is based upon, so I can go ahead and select the right table that I want to base this combo box upon, or that part number field found in that table. Which table? I don't know. Let's go ahead and right-click the tab, go to the design view. Let me close out of the property sheet. Here's a list of the three tables up above that this query is based upon, and they're all related by a temporary join, it looks like, from part number to part number. And this table is related to that one from customer ID to customer ID. And these two tables are related indirectly through the uh, book sales table. In any case, we've got the part number field here, right? And it's added in the grid down below, but I don't want to base it upon what's in the query. I want to base it upon, well, there's the primary key here, the part number in the book project table. And I can do that as long as that table is part of the query. I'm not going to be basing it upon what's in the query here, but outside of it to the actual book project table. And as long as that table is part of the query and it's related, then I should be fine. That way I can avoid basing that combo box upon the part number here within the query that's going to have duplicates, okay? So let's go ahead and close out to get started. I want to go ahead and click and drag to put a line through both the uh, label and the text box so I can delete it. And let's go ahead and create that combo box. Come up here, click on the Design tab. Down here on the Controls, click the More button. Come over here, and there it is, Combo Box. Click on it, and then come down here, and you can see that I've got a plus sign and then the uh, icon for the combo box. Go ahead and, well, I'm going to click right about there. The reason why I click there is because it'll add its text box, and then over to the left, I've got to leave room for the corresponding label for my combo box. It opens up the wizard where, again, the wizard's going to ask us a bunch of questions. We give it answers. Based upon those answers, it'll go ahead and create this combo box for us. We've got three options. I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query. I will type in the values that I want, or find a record on my form based upon the value I select in the combo box. We're going to go ahead and base it upon that table as I was talking about, the book project table. So we'll select it here, click Next, and there it is, book project table. If I wanted to base it upon a query, and there's no duplicates within the query, then go ahead and go to Queries, select the Queries, or you can see both. Queries and Tables. Let's go back to Tables, select Book Project Table, click Next. And as you recall, when I click on the combo box, I would like to see not only the part number, double click to add it over here, but also the book title. Because I don't have the part numbers memorized, but I just want the part number to be displayed, and not the book title. And then click Next. And I would like to sort it ascending by part number. So when I click on the combo box drop down arrow, it's got it sorted from smallest to largest. Or I can click descending from largest to smallest, but we'll go with ascending. Click next. Makes it easier to find if it's sorted. Now when I go ahead and I click on the combo box, if it was all done, I would just see the book title, not the key column, which is the part number. 
the unique columns. So I can go ahead and uncheck that so I can see it. And if I want to do a best fit for both these columns, just hover over the right hand side of the column label, part number, double click really fast over to the right hand side of the book title column label until I can see those black arrows and then click and drag or double click really fast. Then we'll go ahead and click next. And then it says, okay, when you go ahead and you choose something from the combo box, you can store a value. Choose a field that uniquely identifies the row. As I mentioned in an earlier training video when it came to the lookup field for a table, we wanted to use the uh, primary key. I mean, that's the unique field, right? And that's the value that we would like to store is that part number, not the book title. So we'll go ahead and you can see it's selected by default. Click Next. And then we want to say, instead of remembering the value for later use, after we select it in our combo box, we want to store that value, again, in the part number field. Now that's the part number field in our query, because as we backed up, notice the spellings, part number, the pound sign, is coming from the book project table, right? When we go next, it says, okay, you're going to be looking it up there, but when you select it, this form is based upon the query with the part number spelled out here, that field. Do you want to store it in there? Absolutely. Let's click next. We'll call it our part number. Click finish. Let's go ahead and take it for a test drive by right-clicking the uh, tab here, going to form view, and we can navigate through, and you can see it's updating the different part numbers, but now here's the big test, the drop-down arrow. When I click on it, it shows me the part number. Well, gosh, it's kind of cut off here. I better uh, go back and change the properties of it so I can see all of it, but it lists both the part number and its corresponding uh, book title. So that way, I won't make a mistake when somebody says, okay, I want Believe and Grow Rich. I don't know what the part number is for it, so I can go ahead and just select the title. When I select it, it selects and displays the uh, corresponding part number. Let me go ahead. You can see the pencil hit the escape key so it doesn't save it. Right-click, go back to the design view. With the part number uh, combo box selected, let me bring up the property sheet by coming up here on the design tab to the tools group, clicking on properties, and there we go, the column width. The first column width is not that large. So we want to go ahead and change it from 0.666, what a devilish of a number, to three quarters of an inch. And then let's go ahead and take it for a test drive. Click on the view button, click on the drop down arrow. Okay, that's much nicer there. I can see everything there. Let me hit the escape key. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, Please see the description below this video.